What's up, guys? Darren Graham here, your host, your new host for the Big Ten here at the Voice of College Football. I'm so excited to be here, and I just couldn't wait. I couldn't wait until Monday. Of course, Monday is when we're going to do our first live stream on the channel, so get subscribed so you get notified of that. We're going to be live Mondays at 8 p.m. from now on to talk all things Big Ten football with yours truly. We'll have some guests on. we got some guests lined up for that, by the way. So that's going to be really exciting. Free people from all around the conference, people that cover your favorite teams. And by the way, if you have somebody that you know of, a content creator that you really like from around the Big Ten that you'd like to have on, like to see as a guest with me on Big Ten Live, drop a name in the chat. And by the way, let me know what you think of the topic of this video, which, by the way, is... USC, I wanted to get on and talk some USC football today because I see some interesting things being said about this team, some things being thrown out there that I just had to comment on. I just had to say something. And I know it's interesting. The first video that I do on the Big Ten channel is about a former Pac-12 team. That's where we are here in 2024 with college football. Who would have thought? Who would have thought, by the way? Whoever would have thought that we'd be here? Not me. Not me, but I got four reasons for you guys why I think USC will actually not only be just fine, but be one of the better teams in the conference going forward. Yeah, that's you heard that right. I think 10 and 2, or dare I say it, even 11 and 1 is on the table for this team going forward. And number one, the first thing that I have to say is the defense, I think, still showed signs of improvement. Although they just lost to Michigan, of course, on the road in the big house in dramatic fashion, we all saw it, we all reacted to it. The defense still played pretty well, and especially in that second half. And by the way, outside of those three big carries that they gave up to Michigan, they ran, they gave up just 2.9 yards per carry outside of those three big runs. The defense wasn't entirely bad throughout that game. Any team like the Michigan Wolverines that runs the ball and runs the ball and runs the ball, they're kind of doing it for two different reasons, to, to possibly get two different outcomes. And I think Michigan got one of them in this game. They're, they're doing it because they can either consistently get five or six yards on a team. And we saw that back in like the 2021 Ohio State game. We saw that when this team played another former Pac-12 team in Washington back in 2021. We saw a lot of teams in 2021 give up consistently five or six yards on the ground to that Michigan team because they had a great offensive line and Hassan Haskins. But speaking of Hassan Haskins, Michigan has another running back kind of of that ilk and in that mold in Khalil Mullins. And Khalil Mullins had a super high average in this game, of course, but he ripped off two big runs. And outside of that, USC's defense didn't do too bad. And it was another promising sign, I think, for this defense going forward. Danton Lynn is figuring things out there. But really, Michigan either wants to do that or they want to get a few explosives on you in the run game that really tilt the balance of the game and change the shape in the course of the game. They were able to get one of those things, but USC kept them largely, and especially in the second half after D'Anton Lynn made what I think was kind of a genius call, honestly, to switch to that bare front, which closed down more gaps and put more linebackers into better positions to tackle the running back just a couple of yards downfield as opposed to 40 yards downfield. I think... USC's defense still showed signs of improvement in that game. And by the way, they're still 15th in the country on third down defense in terms of third down defense, excuse me, giving up first downs on third down only about 28% of the time. And we all know in the Big Ten, it comes down to being able to slow down the run and stop teams on third down. Danton Lynn still obviously figuring things out. This was only his, what, third or fourth game as the defensive coordinator at USC. And I think there's still signs of improvement. There's still things to take away from this game. Obviously, they absolutely shut down the passing game. They were able to get pressure on Alex Orgy all game. And Michigan's longest pass in this game was for only 10 yards. Now, the Michigan quarterback situation is a whole thing that we'll probably talk about a lot on this channel going forward in and of itself. But... But you still got to give credit where credit's due. That defense, outside of the big explosive plays, was actually pretty good. Tackled a lot better, by the way, than they did last season. Still very much improved. Again, 2.9 yards per carry is all they gave up outside of the three explosives. And don't get me wrong, the three explosives were, made, were what made the difference in this game. But I think it's still promising going forward. By the way, before... Entering this game, they were like 33rd in the country in run defense and only gave up like 3.8 yards per carry. I'd expect them to get back to that level after having played what is honestly the most bruising, dominating run game possibly in all the Big Ten in Michigan. That seems to be the one thing they are getting better at outside of their quarterback situation. And then reason number two is they still have an elite quarterback, especially in terms of the Big Ten. Who else in the Big Ten has a quarterback better than Miller Moss? Maybe two, maybe three teams? No, I think there's really two teams, Oregon 
and Ohio State, Will Howard is actually playing at a very high level right now. And you can probably put Drew Aller in that conversation as well. Miller Moss wasn't terrible in this game, but we know that he had to deal with a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure in this game. He was absolutely, well, shut down in that first half. Josiah Stewart coming on around the edge was absolutely blowing him up all day. But Miller Moss, despite the pressure, despite all that he had to deal with in this game, still 28 completions for 283 yards, about 10 yards per completion, three touchdowns and an interception. Miller Moss playing despite all that pressure, playing as well as he did, is really why USC was able to get back into this game. And on the season so far, he's 76 of 117 for 800 90 yards, five touchdowns and an interception. A 65% completion percentage isn't anything to brag about, but still pretty good. And where this offense really does well, and we talked about it on my channel, by the way, you can follow Darren Talks about I host a whole other channel over there, by the way. If we talked about it in a preview prediction and prediction video for this game, and of course we got that score prediction 100% right, by the way, little pats on backs for that. We talked about how this offense likes to score in volume. They like to get a large volume of plays and hit a few explosives themselves like Michigan did in the run game in that one and really drive off of that and really have success off of that. Miller Moss, by the way, is still eighth in the country in completions per game and his yards per attempt average, even despite all of the incompletions in this game, just over 50% completion percentage in this game. He's still at 7.6 in terms of yards per attempt. By the way, this offense is still eighth in SP+. And with Miller Moss not having to face an NFL-level defense, which brings me to my third point in this video, Michigan still has a really, really great defense. They're particularly bad matchup for USC, by the way. An elite defensive line, which Miller Moss probably won't see for the rest of the season, with four guys who are future NFL players putting pressure on him all day. And the coverages that Michigan runs are very complex. We've gone over the Amoeba defense a ton on my channel over at Darren Talks Ball. We talked about it in the preview and prediction video. It's the reason why I picked Michigan over USC in this game. This was a defensive matchup nightmare for USC's offense. This defense was built to slow down CJ Stroud and that Ohio State passing attack that Ohio State had a few years ago. They were able to completely stop Michael Penix in the national championship last year. And though they lost some players like Mikey Sanders still and Chris Jenkins and et cetera, et cetera, still one of the best defensive lines in the entire country. And don't look now, but Zeke Berry and Jair Hill and a few guys that have stepped up on that defense are playing really well so far this year. So don't get to knock down if you're a USC fan out there about Miller Moss's performance in this game. This was also, and again, my third point, a really bad, particularly a bad rock, paper, scissors matchup schematically for USC in this one. And then my fourth reason why I think USC will be just fine, and dare I say it, they'll, they can even go 10-2 and two or even 11-1, and one, is the schedule. When you look at the schedule down the stretch, they avoid Oregon, they avoid Ohio State, and the big key is all their toughest games that they have left on the schedule, the tough teams that they do play, they get them all at home. They play Penn State, Nebraska, and Notre Dame, and those are all very winnable games, I think, especially after what Notre Dame did, losing to Northern Illinois. Penn State struggling, by the way, against Bowling Green last week. And Nebraska falling to Illinois. Those are all winnable games now to me, especially with USC and their firepower that they have on offense and the fact that those games are all at home. Outside of that, they play Wisconsin at Minnesota, at Maryland, Rutgers at Washington, and at UCLA. All very winnable games. All games that they could win. They could beat Wisconsin by 20, and I wouldn't be surprised. They could, they could absolutely handle Minnesota, Maryland, Rutgers. Washington is a team that just lost to a Washington State team that's not very good. And UCLA has looked absolutely dormant outside of like one half against LSU. Very, very winnable games on their schedule. Don't overlook USC for the rest of the season. They could still be in this Big Ten title fight by the end of it. Those are my four reasons why I think USC will be just fine this season. Of course, don't forget to hit the like button on this video get it up into the algorithm get this channel going let's get big 10 at the voice of college football rolling once again and as always be kind to other people out there and i'll see you guys soon